Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. It is Paul Kiker Day. It is Money Management Day. It is Wealth Day. It is Happy 2022. Yes. 2022. That is very strange to me. Is that a, um, you know, uh, you know, the most important year of my life was probably 1965 when Mother moved us from Orlando back to Atlanta. So there are monumental days in my life that I'm like, oh, I wouldn't be here if that hadn't happened, or oh, right. I wouldn't be here. So this year, my crew has said, Sherry, this is your year. This is your year. And I said, why? And they said, because it's 2022. I said, what does that mean? <laughs> and they said, because you're always doing for everybody but you, this is your year. And I said, why? <laughs> you know? And I thought, I don't know why, but everybody <laughs> says, this is going to be my year. So I'm going to declare it. This is going to be my this year. Be you know, year. I keep hearing from everybody. Oh my gosh, this is going to be an amazing year for you. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why? What is 2022? But I will, I will accept that, and I will declare it. And I will just say, um, I'm so excited that the economy is doing well because interest is so low. That's driving the market, and housing is still crazy and crazy mm -hmm. successful. So we want it to stay that way because you can buy, you're building right. a home. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been able to borrow money as cheap as you can today? No, no. Never, nobody has. <clears throat> no. Nobody has, it's record breaking. So people are able to buy mm -hmm. a home that have never been able to buy a home. I love that, mm -hmm. I love that. And um, this morning a house came back on the market and it is in um, uh, Creekland Creek View School District, amazing district. It's way over everybody I know's budget. It's $695,000. But out of every home I've ever shown in 34 years of real estate, this is like my favorite home. Is it really? It is in a cul-de-sac. It is on almost seven yeah. acres. It is absolutely amazing. And it is done in the colors of the 80s. <laughs> so, so That's coming back again I now, wore this it? shirt today in honor of the colors of the 80s because the kitchen is this color, which is really weird. <laughs> But I love this house. I love it. And it's dated. It's very dated, but it has this big, huge living room. And it's in the middle of the seven, almost seven acres. And it has walking nice. paths all through it. And you can just tell that the people loved it. And they planted flowers and, and shrubbery. It's beautiful. And when it came back on the market, I said, oh, it's back on the market. How did that happen? And they said, well, the people's loan fell through. And I said, well, sad for them, good for everybody that is else. Sad, yeah. Because you can buy $695,000 is a lot of money for a house. Mm -hmm. But if you're getting your money at 2.3% interest mm -hmm. or 2.7% interest, you get a lot more than you ever dreamed you could buy. 30-year mortgages at 2.7 right now? Yes. yes. Interesting. It's very crazy. Yeah. It's very crazy. And I talked to somebody last night who's locked in at 2.3. Yeah. 2.3. Wow. And I'm like, that is really cool. That is really cool. So. So we are seeing, I hope 2022 is going to be a stellar year for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I hope they're going to be making money. I hope that they're going to stay healthy because mm -hmm. we have seen, um, this has been, you actually were involved in a little um, gathering that, yes. that spread a few germs yeah. and everybody ended up with COVID. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody's okay. Yeah, everybody's okay. Everybody's okay. Yeah. So I've been very distant, very cautious, very, I'm not like somebody wanted to come and be on and they said, oh, well, he just got back from Florida. And I'm like, uh, no, I'm right. not doing that. Mm -mm, I'm gonna, right. you know, wait 10 days. But I've only had it one time. You've had it twice now. So this is second go around, yeah. That was way this early, one it was e like November easier? 2000. Was this one easier? Oh yeah, a lot easier. And yeah, this was that new easy. variance that is five day or? I would assume it is because it was so contagious and, and you know, basically followed all the basic symptoms. It was like a severe cold. Like a bad cold. Yeah, Everybody like says cold. that this one is, <laughs> but it, is, it has also been deadly. Yeah. So some people are not recovering as well as you did. Right. But um, when y'all came down with this, was it kind of like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, everybody had it all at once? Or it, did it spread, spread to out each over other? about three or four days. Okay. Um, it hit a lot quicker from exposure from the one before. Um, but I think my aunt in Mississippi ended up being the last one to kind of end up being sick. So she was like four days later. <clears throat> and um, 
and it hit her and she was over it in a couple of days. Right, right. So, and you said she's today. She's pretty upset though. Yeah. Because she's like, I've, I've had my I vaccine. I came from Mississippi and here I am. Well, no, she wasn't uh, mad at us. She's uh, yeah. like, I've had my vaccines and I had my booster shot and I had all that and I still got it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> you know. Well, you know, everybody to their own opinion. And I have not done anything except vitamin up. I'm like the vitamin queen, and I am into vitamins extraordinaire. So um, trying to really just stay healthy and right. um, been watching my sugar, been watching all this, and I've learned now that I watch my sugar, I can really tell when it gets out of sync. Mm -hmm. So it's weird. Before, I just thought, well, I'm a little sluggish, I'm a little this, I'm a little that. And now then you know once you watch it, then you're like, oh, so mm -hmm. that's what's going on. So it's mm -hmm. very, very weird. But... Um, we hope that 2022 brings health, wealth, and happiness to yes. everybody. Yes. To everybody. Now, are you going to be able to start your seminars again? Because I know a lot of people were interested in that. Yeah, so we've been talking about that. I, you know, I don't know what this administration is going to do. Nobody does, uh, including them. Yeah, I mean, like I was I listening to his, you know, he, he did a... I don't listen to nothing. He, he did a speech yesterday. I don't listen and, to oh, nothing. Oh, if you're unvaccinated, you should keep, you should, uh, he said, keep your kids. He alluded to the fact that you should not allow your kids to be around unvaccinated people. Oh. It's about as bad as Micron over in uh, France that says we're just going to agitate people to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, anyway, so I just don't trust this administration to, to make prudent decisions when it came. So it's pretty expensive to put on one of those seminars. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know what, more than likely when Omicron kind of popped up and we saw it on the radar, Brittany and I were talking about the planning. I said, let's just, let's see Wait. how they handle yes, this. Yes. And if we don't go into lockdowns, then we can do something in February or March. So, yeah. the, so I mean, February is going to be here that fast. Right, right. It takes me about 60 days <laughs> to prep for it. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably start these up again in the spring. That's the plan. Yeah, yeah. And you could even do it like outside somewhere, couldn't you? Could you I do sure that could. and have a meal catered? Yeah, we could. I mean, that's you a know? good idea in the spring. Yeah, uh, yeah. We could do something like that. Yeah, if you could plan ahead. Um, how many people do you usually serve? I limit it to 24 people. Okay. Because so, I have a perfect place in ball ground for you. Oh, you do? Okay. Laura Mays, the beautiful, beautiful historical home okay. that is absolutely great. And they have a back room where we could put 24 mm -hmm. people. And then they have a porch where you could overflow. Okay. And then they have a courtyard that is absolutely fantastic with a beautiful historical tree. Nice. So if it were a beautiful day, you could actually do the whole event outside and they could cater the food. Yeah, so that would be nice. There, now, I'm a, now I'm a planner. <laughs> Now I'm a well, if we get over 24 people, I just don't have a chance to interact to with them. everybody. Yes, yes. I have found when there's more than 24 people, people don't ask as many questions. Yeah. Um, so you know, 20 to 24 is about where I limit it. So mm -hmm. what we do is when we when we send it out, if we have, because I typically have a good 50 to 70 people respond that want to come in, mm -hmm. uh, we'll just do multiple events. Right. Um, you know, so that's And the setting at Laura Mays is just so perfect. Yeah. It's just so beautiful. I've not been there. I'll have to go it's, check it out. It's, it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful historical home that's been restored and um, it's just a fantastic place. And I always, we use the back room for like when we have <coughs> gatherings mm -hmm. and, and they have these big long tables and so it would give you a place that you could stand up front and talk mm -hmm. to everybody and just, just a comfortable situation. So. Well, it's amazing how hard it is to find a, a restaurant that has the capacity mm -hmm. to seat, you know, 24 people this one's to allow perfect. me to put up the technology yep. that we need. Yep. And and the, and they have Wi-Fi there. And so. not enough noise to where you can carry on that conversation. Right. Right. So, and this is a back private room, yeah. so it'd be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's a good idea. I hope I've encouraged you. You have. Because <laughs> if have. he's in ball ground, then I could go. And yeah, I could learn the, all the things. It's been in, interesting because you get all these surveys from the government's like, hey, has, has COVID changed the way you do things? And I said, sure absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, like like I would I would have, once we started, I would have never stopped. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to get and shut no down. Choice. yeah. 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 Well, today we're going to honor a gentleman. And uh, Tim, do we have the Morris Stencil stuff ready? Okay. Um, about three years ago, I was fortunate enough to have a gentleman here with us. He was one of the pioneers of coming to local television. Morris Stencil had written over 200 songs. Hmm. He had just compiled a book featuring all of his songs. And so he passed away over the Christmas holidays. His service is today 
worse than that, his son Greg buried his mother four days before his daddy died. Mm. So if you think you're having a bad day, <clears throat> you got two parents within a week of each other. And so today we salute Morris Stansel and the memories and the music and the amazing words to so many songs. And we're going to feature a couple of them. We're going to do one now, then we're going to do one a little bit later. We'll split them up. But, but he wrote these great songs and he was just an amazing, he, he loved to play the piano. He loved to share his messages. And one of the things I really, really liked is him sitting down with a young man. The young man's name is Brandon Blackwell. And he sat down and just played the piano with him. And I thought, what an encouragement this man was to other people to get into the music industry. What an encouragement he was to everybody who sang in their churches to step out of your comfort zone and go out and sing to the public. And we saw Angel Spirit do that. And on one of their CDs, they featured one of his songs, Holy Angels. And that's the song that everybody needs to play at their funeral. And it's just an amazing, amazing song. So I would say today at Morris Stansel's funeral, they will be playing Holy Angels Take Me Home. Mm -hmm. So so we're going to share a little bit of his music and um, a little bit of the memories because he was one of those pioneers. He lived in the free home community for many, many years right beside the swimming pool. And he was a Forsyth County boy, um, Forsyth County, Cherokee County. Everybody knew him. And then he just penned all these amazing songs. And they all came with the perfect message of salvation, of resurrection, of always a great message. So, mm -hmm. so we're going to enjoy a little bit of that right now. And we salute you, Morris Stansel. I know that when you got there, Jesus said, yes, he's here. We're going to have a song now. <laughs> so, so there you go. Here we go. Um, let's salute Morris Stansel. <laughs>
And we've been, this is so funny because my phone's over here, you know, we do Facebook while we're doing this. And I got tickled because, you know, I've been off for two weeks and so nobody's used to me being back on from 11 to 12. So my phone's over here ringing, ring, 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 ring. <laughs> my phone can't ring now because I'm back at work. But uh, you're, you have a, you're about to become a father-in-law for the first time? Right, yes. Is that going to be interesting? Do you like this young man? I like Tyler, I do. I mean, they've yeah. dated for, for quite some time, and I've done about everything I could possibly do to run him off. Yes, in, and in, it didn't in work. A, in a good way. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like, he earns my respect, and I yeah. like people that I respect. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, so they're getting married this summer? So June 11th be coming up so they're getting married That's I birthed a 10 pound quickly. baby on June 11th did you really yeah I hope your day comes out better than mine did because it hurt like the <laughs> devil <laughs> I just warned you it hurt <laughs> I wouldn't say my pocketbook's going to hurt real bad yeah, but Katie's, yeah. Katie I think they invented copper wire pulling a penny out of her hand yeah yeah I gave her a budget and she's like do I get to, do I get uh for helping us out what I don't spend and yeah and I've yeah. had to tell her twice. I'm like, Katie, look, you, you're going to have to invite a few more people than yeah. what you're inviting. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that's funny. But yeah, it's been interesting. So Tyler's in the process of studying for the MCAT, so that he can he, he's going to he wants to get into medical school. Mm -hmm. So I think he takes the MCAT around uh, March, uh, May, April, somewhere around. Smart there. young man. He's incredibly intelligent. He really is. Um, well, he chose a little cocker to marry. That's pretty smart. He, he's got a, <laughs> he's got a, he's got a very good mind. Yeah. And Katie's got a lot of drive, and they they balance each other out yeah. well. He's, yeah. He's a little quiet. Yeah. But um, so he's starting his his career in the interim periods. Medical school is a little bit different than what it used to be. But what I'm getting to is he got a job in Roswell, a research assistant. He's going to do that till medical school starts, assuming that he gets in. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they've been looking for apartments. 
and it's good luck. Well, I mean, they found expensive. one. Expensive. <laughs> they found one because Katie's one heck of a salesperson. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, so they're going in. She'll move in after they get married. He's going in before, but they're going to pay. I mean, I hate to say this on television, but it's fifteen hundred dollars a month. Sure. So you look at you, you, you've got and my a first young house couple. payment was two fifty one twenty two a month. Right. House payment two fifty one twenty two. A That's young crazy. couple is trying to get started, mm -hmm. and you know, Katie's fortunate not to have any college debt. Tyler's going to have some, mm -hmm. especially going through medical Med school. school. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, and it, so you're already starting out with stones in your backpack, and then you get an apartment, which is. I mean, I, I'm That's sorry. That's fifteen hundred before you tell it. At rates right now, you can buy yes. a four hundred thousand yes. dollar yes. house. Yes. Well, I take that back. Yes. A three hundred thousand dollar house. Actually, I have can sell them one today, and their payment would be fourteen hundred dollars a month, including okay. their taxes and insurance. A four hundred thousand dollar house. Move in ready. That's it's ridiculous. Actually, less than that. So that's they what our could kids. move in there. That's yes. what our kids are having to pay for yes. rent. Yeah, that's and crazy. then you and then you've got a situation where uh, we're so polarized in our country right now. You've got some people that are like, we don't want any new construction whatsoever. Yeah. Well, you know what? There are no jobs here for our kids to come back to. Right. So if we continue those policies in Gilmer County, Pickens County, and Blue Ridge, then a bunch of old people are going to be changing their own diapers about 15 years down the road because yep. there's not going to be any kids here. Right. right. On the other side, you know, you don't want to you don't want to who, dot our who doesn't with want houses all over the place. Who doesn't want progress? Who is it? Is it government who doesn't want it? Is it the locals who don't want it? Who doesn't want progress? Well, there's always some people who don't want progress. But the problem is the media, social media has done such a good job of polarizing people. Mm -hmm. It seems like, well, I'm going to run and be with this group that we don't want any new construction. Or I'm going to run and I'm going to support this group because they want to build a house as close as you can put them together. I don't think anybody wants to build a house as close no, as you can put them no, together. No, no, no. But the reality is, you know, people love to come to our area because David Ralston was, was key in putting, if you're over the age of 65, you don't pay any school taxes. Right. Well, you know what? Cherokee if County's the same way. Look, it's got to be changed. If okay. you're moving okay. into this area <laughs> and you've not been here, you're going to have to pay for the infrastructure somehow. Mm -hmm. I don't know that anybody's talking about that. I'm not a politician, but it's just math. And we've got to get to the point where we're, we're trying to do what's best for everybody and we agree to work together and we negotiate because all of us working together can develop a plan in our area that can let us have controlled growth, impact fees that are reasonable. Mm -hmm. And I think if you move in, you should pay an impact fee. And I think if you're a local, you should get out of that impact fee if you've been here long right, enough, right? right because yeah. you've, you've already paid taxes or right. supported taxes on rent right. to go towards the local community. So we're going to have to pursue the path of wisdom instead of this is what I want or this is what I want. We all have to give up and negotiate and stop all of this. Well, I'm a Democrat and I'm a Republican or I'm a, <coughs> I'm a keep rural or I'm a local or whatever. We all live in this county together, and we all want it to be a great place. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't it be nice if our kids could find some employment yeah. besides, oh, you know, the, yes, construction. If you want to go in construction or real estate, fantastic. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, there's, you know, we've not done a good job of having it easy for restaurants to be developed for other types of business that we can recruit in the area technology we are somewhere where everybody wants to live mm -hmm. and we can get together and figure this out if we agree to work together instead of you know I'm gonna bully you and then you're gonna bully me back and we're not gonna get anything done and we're gonna be a bunch of old people changing each other's diapers with no kids around have you been to downtown Jasper lately I have, yes. It's amazing. It's awesome. It is amazing. I said, I just, I go to one end of town and I just look on both sides and I'm just like, holy cow, the, the right. shops are busy, the restaurants are open, the coffee shops, the ice cream place, the, the things, it's booming. And that is something, it's like you build it and we will come. Well, people are coming and spending money and jobs. I mean, the mule house can't hire enough people right. to run the place. It's well, the crazy. Problem is for, for 
we don't have enough affordable housing situation. Mm -hmm, exactly. But I mean, think about it. If you're if you want to work at a restaurant, go to Canton. There's there's far more options as mm -hmm. far as renting and housing. There's not as many as there needs to be. Right. But there's more in our area, and and you can afford to wait tables or serve or something mm -hmm. and still have a decent living. We're getting into our area where you can't do that. Yep, yep. And in 15 years of being on your show, this is the first time I've been red faced and going, have <laughs> I said something I'm gonna regret and pay for? But, but w whether uh, I'm right or wrong, I don't know. I just know that there's a lot of discussion coming up towards the election coming up this fall. Mm -hmm. And I'm angry. I'm angry that people polarize one way or another. I'm yeah. angry that really smart people on both sides don't want to see each other as humans, that we're in this together, we live here to get to be a good neighbor to each mm -hmm, other mm -hmm. and say, you know what, I may disagree with the way you want to do it, but I'm I, gonna I make do, you. you know, let's work together, let's figure this out because our community needs that. Our our children need that. And and whether these individuals that are polarized realize it or not, they're gonna need it when there's nobody to take care of them down right, the road. Right. I'm going to make you cry. <clears throat> there's a development in Ball Ground right here. Then there's a road here. And then there's another little development here, small development. And right here is about to be a, an amazing development, walking distance to town. These people who all moved in here because this development happened have squawked and cried and screamed and raised cane because this development's coming. Now, this development came and took over land that had been sitting there as farming area for many, many years. This development came and took over the cotton fields and nobody squawked and nobody did anything and it, it's there. But then the new development comes and they wanna shut it down, they wanna shut it down. Okay, these are gonna be more expensive than both of these. They're gonna bring in tax dollars, they're gonna bring in young mm -hmm. families, mm -hmm. they're walking distance to town, they're walking distance to the park. If I, I save all the screenshots of what people have said about this, the negativity, the negativity, the negativity. It has been absolutely crazy. The developer here is an award-winning Hall of Fame developer. I it is gonna be top thing. notch. It is gonna be amazing. But we've got these squawkers. So you got the squawkers. Well, I don't drink and, and I'm, a bit of a witch about it because I don't drink and I've lived with an alcoholic so I'm really weird about You've it. You've experienced the bad part of alcohol. I have and so guess what in all the humor in the world is coming next door to my office. Liquor store? <laughs> a bar, Good a bar. bar. My office is gonna be located next to a bar and I have died laughing because I tried their food over the holidays mm -hmm. they had a little get to know you and their food's fantastic. So you're gonna see me the Southern Baptist that doesn't drink at all, walking into the bar in Ball Ground. You know why I'm going to support that bar you're in Ball Ground? Bound, you're not going to brown bag it while no, you're sitting there. No, no, but I will, I'm sorry. I will support this business, right. even though I'm totally against alcohol. Well, and I will support that business. And that's the right, that, that's the right way to approach it. Okay. They're not going to make me drink. They're right. not going to force me to drink. Right. You know, I'm going to support that business because I'm right. so thankful that once again we have growth in ball ground, right. and and it's walking distance to our parks. It's walking distance mm -hmm. to the ball field. It's walking distance to the tennis court. It's going to be fantastic. But it's a bar. And when I right. saw that sign go up, I just cracked up laughing. I said, God, you've got a sense of humor. <laughs> you have put me next door to the bar. <laughs> so why is what what is the argument? I'm curious. Here, What's the argument? Traffic. On why they not? just think it's going to be traffic, traffic. Well, 600 people, 600 cars a day come out of here, and I did a count, mm -hmm. and I did it. How many come out every it's a big three minutes? Man. Yeah. And then I did it here, and they're all whining, and oh, it's been horrible. It's been it's been really nasty, nasty. Is the infrastructure of the roads enough to handle it? Yeah, sure. Everything's good. I mean, They've done a study. Try to get out of my office and turn left yes, in Jasper. Yes, it's horrible. Traffic is yes, bad. That's just horrible. a part of progress. That's part of progress. Yeah. But it's planned progress. Right. And so, I think that Gilmer County, Boardtown Road's my favorite road. Right. I just I think that. God gave you Boardtown Road. I absolutely love it. I love to go out to Cassius Valley. I just love Boardtown. But when they started talking about bringing those power lines here, we all got up in arms and we went crazy. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness it was stopped. Right. And they're not going to do that anymore. That because made sense to that stop made that. One hundred percent, I understand. Made sense. There are parts of these mountains that I right. understand we want to preserve. But I also understand that. I would love for all my kids to have been able to work at home. If we hadn't right. had a company where three out of five of the kids worked for us, 
They couldn't have found a job paying right. what we paid them because there were no jobs in Jasper when we were raising kids. Right. And all well, the kids were leaving. Manufacturing took everything to Pickens Mexico Footwear or left, China. H.D. Yeah. Lee left. Yeah. Um, Armstrong Glass closed. I mean, everything where they were making good money. Royston is the only saving grace of yeah. Pickens County. And between Royston and the school system, those are the two largest mm -hmm. employers. Thank God they have huge payrolls. They have good benefits, both of them do, the mm -hmm. school system and Royston. But if Royston, Georgia didn't have, there are people who work at Royston from Copper Hill, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. People drive that far to work at Royston. It is a wonderful company. But had they not been able to fill these slots of over 200 employees, they might not have stayed in Jasper. Well, they would have had to go somewhere else. Yeah. And, and see, just like people didn't understand the long-term ramifications of losing the manufacturing, back then, mm -hmm. people also don't understand that the growth is coming here in the long term. Yep. And you can do Manage one, it. you can do well, Manage you can do it. one of two things. You can we can argue with each other and we can say, I'm not and get nothing done. Mm -hmm. And then somebody with deep enough pockets is going to come in. They're going to come in with the attorneys that have the legal ability mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be nasty enough to steamroll anybody in the way. Right. And somebody outside of here for their own pocket is going to control mm -hmm. the growth because we And you're can't, gonna lose control totally. Because we can't agree. We can't agree. Yeah. And we don't want to agree with each other and we don't want to be good neighbors to each other. That that's, that's crazy. not it's it's if we treat each other with respect and we have conversations and, and I don't know any of the people involved, right? I know none of the names of the people on each side. I just hear everybody complaining mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. what's going on. Have they done a moratorium to stop building? Or are they trying no to slow things clue. down? Because I no when clue. I heard that rumor about Cherokee County, and I thought, well, I had heard a little bit about it from a couple of different people, but you know, there are enough projects going. There's right. four to five years worth of projects already approved. You know, so maybe right. that's why they did it. I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, and like I'm, I'm talking about <clears> something that that's just I've I've heard because I I'm I get along with just about everybody. Right. I mean, you ask me the wrong question. I'm going to give you the right answer and probably upset the yeah. honest answer and probably upset you. Yeah. But I, I, I navigate, you know, all of the different personalities and groups because I respect people. Mm -hmm. Even if we have different opinions, I can respect them. Right. And I'll still treat them with kindness. Right. Um, but so I, I'm hearing kind of both sides are complaining about the other side. And, and I've had this conversation with everybody and they agree. Uh, that, that we've got to do something, we've got to get together, because that's my concern. Another five years and our growth continues in this area, and let's say California and New York continue to flee they like us. they are. They found us. I mean, you would not believe, the, well, you know, because you're in real estate, and yep. the numbers of people that are wanting to come, they're going to Florida, mm -hmm. they're gonna price, they'll get priced out and back into here. At some point, we're mm -hmm. close enough to Atlanta, yep. we have the infrastructure, Somebody's going to come in with four, five, or six hundred million dollars, and they're going to control everything. Mm -hmm. And if we can get along together now, and we can develop a plan that's palatable, that okay, yes, we need some apartment buildings. We need some more apartment space. It's supply and demand. Mm -hmm. So let's build enough and and give tax incentives enough to where we can have affordable housing here. Let's figure out where they're going to go, mm -hmm. and let's 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 put that in. And then let's develop a plan. Okay, you know, how are we going to allow developments to happen? How are we going to keep from having houses all over the side so mm -hmm. we can keep the beauty and we <coughs> can develop our infrastructure? Let's close it. Okay, well, if the growth is faster than what we expect, let's raise the impact fees. Let's raise the impact fees enough that if you want to come here, you pay, enough you. Fee, yeah. you pay enough to build that road in. Right. I mean... Well, we've got to take a commercial break, and when we come back, we're not only going to talk about what you're talking about now. When you're talking about Jasper and the growth that Jasper has now accepted, and um, Jasper's doing a fantastic job. I mean, I just got to give them all the credit in the world. They are working together. They have arguments. They have discussions. They move along, but they get things done. And maybe they could be an example for, <clears throat> it was a stalemate for so long, just sitting there, it all the buildings empty. It was a stalemate for a long time. In and Jasper. now they are succeeding, and I'm so proud of them. Yeah. So um, we're going to take a commercial break, and please remember our sponsors, and please remember Donald Curtis at Farmers Insurance. So uh, pick up the phone and call him if you need insurance. We'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> Thank you. 
Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meat, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation 770-345-2000 or go online to georgiamtc.com. Yeah, or okay, we're back, well. and we were just talking to our Facebook audience about next week is my birthday. It's a big deal. It's a big birthday, and I lived through some surgery last week, and I was just sharing with Paul that I had this two dreams, and I didn't. I made it through surgery great, and then I died of a blood clot, and it was very, very real to me, and I just... I was very emotional, and it's so weird now because everything's good. I'm going today for a post-op checkup, and uh, he said to medicate before I get there because what he's going to do is going to hurt. And so <laughs> I'm like, ah, I don't want to hear that, you know. But, but this year, 2022, will be a milestone year for a lot of people. A lot of people came out of COVID after being in ICU. A lot yes. of people came back from a stroke after being in ICU. This year will be a year to decide what path do you want to follow right. do you want to go with the sheep and follow the little sheep or do you want to be your own person do you want to design would you would you start over today as paul kiker investments or would you work for somebody else have you ever had thoughts of is this the path i really wanted and am i glad i took it it's going to be a milestone year for a lot of people that's a good question um you went yeah, out on I mean, your I, own. You went out on your own as a young man. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you that no doubt that I would be uh, independent mm -hmm. because what I see the corporate companies driving, um, I, I, I couldn't participate in that. Mm -hmm. No, I can't. I so you, but here's the problem. You and Don were a lot mm -hmm. alike about that because right. he chose to leave a large company yes. and left a lot of money on the table. I would have been far better off if I'd have stayed corporate. Yep. Uh, yeah. The benefits but he, would his, have been his better. His heart wouldn't let him do it. No, yeah. I'd, I'd rather make less money and look people in the face, knowing that we did everything that we could to help them prudently make the right decisions, and and if we were able to do that, we benefit with it instead of knowing that there's a corporate firm that's trying to find the balance between what's the most profitable for me mm -hmm. and good enough for the client. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry when you have shareholders involved. That's what happens. Right. That's right. That, all they care about is make <coughs> me as much money as you can make me. Right. I don't care how you. Most people don't care how you do it. It's you know burn as many people as you burn. Mm -hmm. I want money. Yeah. That's not on the individual level, but it is in that corporate level. Right. So the problem is, 
<laughs> the barrier to entry has been raised so high today that there's no way when I started when you know I had I was three years into the into the industry and we were growing fast but I started the business then and was able to leave. Corporate corporations have driven government policy to raise the cost of going on your own to the point that that would be nearly impossible now. Wow. And by God's grace. So you're almost locked into <clears throat> that do it their way or the highway. Yeah. yeah. So you either have to join a firm like us that's already independent and and, and hopefully you agree with you know their their stance mm -hmm. or you're going to have to stay with corporate a lot longer because you just can't literally the barrier to industry uh, and I told Holly I said one of the greatest blessings the Lord's given me has not necessarily been all these extra revenue coming in. Our revenue has come in, but our regulations have gone up to the point that we have outgrown that guillotine. Mm -hmm. But you can feel it breathing right behind you. And if they were to accelerate them for the next three or four years, most of the independent firms would either have to give in to the large ones mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or merge with like-minded individuals. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, you know, Piedmont Northside came in and bought up right. all the doctors. Right. I mean, government regulation makes it nearly impossible to be independent on your own now. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Who controls health care? Mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. handful of people. Mm -hmm. Here's another thing. I was listening to a guy in real estate the other day. I'm going to come back to that because I need to say this. Mm -hmm. Guys, when I talk about all the political stuff going on, I don't know. I'm not involved in mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I'm just hearing the concerns about people. Everybody's so don't, concerned. You know, I, can, yeah. I can make a fool of myself. <coughs> all I know is we need to plan for the future. So right. that takes my OCD and puts that aside. And, and that, when you're talking about <coughs> apartment living here in Gilmer County, right. here in Pickens County, here in Cherokee County, um, everybody is against apartments. Everybody right. just is against apartments until you need an apartment. Right. Or until your child wants to come home and have affordable living and they need an apartment. Right. Then right. you're for an apartment. So right. um, there's a new apartment complex in Ball Ground that has done very well and it's based on income. And the rent is like between 700 and 1100 I mm -hmm. think. So it's, it's doable. We're going to watch it. It's going to be the example for Ball Ground because Ball Ground kind of, they didn't want apartments, but mm -hmm. we got them and they seem to be doing okay. We're going to hope that they stay that way. Right. But I lived in an apartment when I left home at a very, very young age and <clears throat> Dutch Valley Apartments on Monroe Drive in Atlanta. And I can remember what the rent was then. And I was young, working in a law firm during the day. It was tough, but apartments were my only answer. Mm -hmm. So if we want our kids to come home and they can't afford to buy a home, then apartment living is okay. It Plan is. Plan well. It is, but this is a good transition into what I was getting ready to say. So George Gammon is a, a personality. He's been very successful, has a YouTube channel, and he does everything that he can do to try to educate people on what's going on. That's the next phase of where I'm trying to get into to this this social media world is to do videos and, and educate people about what what is taking place and what we're facing. So he interviewed a, a real estate expert. So this guy does $500 million deals, okay? He's been doing it for 30 and 40 years. And he, he, he said in the past, high prices was the cure for high prices because prices would get high, profits would come in, builders would come in, you'd balance the market out and it would settle back down. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit different now because in the 08 crisis, the Obama administration took down all the independent banks. I mean, Pickens County, uh, Community Bank of Pickens County. The only one. Is, I don't know if they're the only one. Sole surviving in Pickens yeah, County. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, all of the local independent banks are gone. So mm -hmm. follow me with this for a minute. So, so what's happened is you have these massive national banks that the government says is too big to fail control all the banks. Well, what they're saying is you go into places like New York and you go into California and you go into these incredibly liberal um, uh, communities that the government believes that they can make the decisions for everyone. Um, then they, the people flee there, go somewhere else and try to tell everybody else how to do things. But anyway, so uh, they're instituting these policies where you can't evict tenants, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so you've got squatters that come in. Well, you know what, if I'm a big bank, I'm just not going to loan money there. 
-hmm. So they're going to implode at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a slow collapse that, that's going to be slow at first and then it's all of a sudden going to happen. But the problem is, you look at these big individuals, you know, these $500 million funds, and they start looking around the country and going, okay, where do we still have a little bit of freedom? That's where we want to be. Mm -hmm. Now, that freedom is, you know, they're not looking to, to if they're a monopoly, it's not capitalism. Mm -hmm. But they're trying to come in to offer a service, right? Like most people want to come in and offer a service. And in apartment building and apartment living, is something that is needed. You know, I know down the road from our house, there's a rehab center. Mm -hmm. And there were people that were raising cane about that rehab coming up. Oh, they're gonna break into your house and all that. I hired the, the individuals to come work over the years. Mm -hmm. These people are trying to change their lives. And mm -hmm. there were people trying to shut that down mm -hmm. because they're The afraid, Isaiah House. Right, yeah. Yes. So in, in the ministry that they do the is The Timothy House, incredible. the Isaiah House. There's the, all um, kinds. There are so many of them who have done amazing jobs. <clears throat> so yeah, apartments are gonna have a, a, a bearing, but you know, it, th there's more traffic, but the traffic's gonna be here, mm -hmm. and we either have the choice to control that <clears> or not, <throat> but then you come back to where monopolies take place. If we had a lot of small individual banks, and I was thinking about that, if you've got a lot of small individual banks and that bank has to do business in that community with that government regulation, well, the people are going to overthrow that government instead of, instead of you know, the big bank say, you know what, that, that branch of ours, we're not going to loan any money over there. That'll just be a loss leader mm -hmm. and let's just walk away from that area completely. So we're missing the balance in this country because we've got these massive entities that, that are making decisions around the country that we don't have a lot of control locally anymore. Mm -hmm. So we've got to take that control back. We've got to support businesses that are local. We've got to, we, we've got to stand up against the Walmart models because they're unbelievably convenient, mm -hmm. but they also dictate whatever choices we have. Right. Because they kill creativity. <clears throat> and I think the Federal Reserve has been the most single most destructive entity to our nation from a long-term standpoint. Yes, they're keeping interest rates low to help housing. Mm -hmm. That's helping mm -hmm. housing. You know what? That's our only saving grace. If interest rates went to six or seven percent, housing's These toast. houses would not sell for 320 because now, people couldn't afford the payment. I will say this, if inflation's running at 10 to 15 percent mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. interest rates go to six or seven, it won't crush things. But your food bill is going to go through the roof. Yeah. So. Um, <coughs> you know, Have you bought a Chuck Russ lately? Hey, they're hysterical. We did. They're hysterical. A chuck rush used to be eighty nine cents a pound, and now they're four ninety eight on sale, six ninety five most of the time. That's like what? What's the number? Seven hundred percent difference. I mean, it's crazy. Hey, we did. I've always done beef tenderloin. I've always done beef tenderloins when we have a bunch of people at our house, and and I'm terrible. Did I'm you ter you feed them ground beef? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what happened. So. <laughs> I, I am just terrible, okay, because when I go to the grocery store, if I want to eat something, I don't go that often. Holly does all the shopping, but when I go, I want what I want. So yeah. I went to get the tenderloin, picked it up, didn't look at it, it went to check out at Kroger, and I scanned it, you know, now that you got to check out for yourself. Yeah. I scanned it, and I just stood there and looked, and I said, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I don't know if I can afford that. Like, I instantly made the decision on, okay, well, I'm going to have to do without this, this, and this. Yeah, it's and crazy. all the way to the car, I was kind of, I was like, it's man, nice. they better like this because yeah, I just yeah. spent a fortune on feeding these yeah, folks. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, I was in um, Quick Burger yeah. in, in Jasper last. Was it last night? Yeah, I think <laughs> last night, and um, picked up a little order. It was almost ten dollars for a hamburger and fries. Almost ten dollars for a hamburger and fries. And then I looked and they were serving a ribeye and it looked amazing. And I said, I didn't know you had steaks. And they said, yeah, it's a Wednesday night special. And I said, how much is it? I didn't know they had that either. $16.95 for a Wednesday night special. And it's a good size ribeye. You can go there and eat it cheaper than you can go to the grocery store and buy that sucker. I don't I know where they ribeye. got it. I don't care, it, but it looked amazing. And I just got tickled because I thought I've just paid 10 bucks and, and, and you're like, you know, used to, I, I love the Quick Burger. I love their right. work eth ethics. I love their attitude. They're, they're, very they're creative. on top of it. They're, they're really, really cool. But I can remember the first time I went to the Quick Burger, I had 
the little bitty cheeseburger that the Cagle family was known for, that was the best hamburger in history. That and fries and a drink was a dollar fifty one. A mm. dollar fifty one. And it was awesome. And nobody has ever replaced that little hamburger. The way Peggy did it with that steam thing or whatever she did it, it was it was the most amazing hamburger I ever put in my mouth. Nobody has recreated that. You know, they're gone, no longer there, and, and it's been heartbreaking because these folks are doing a fantastic job. They moved up here from Florida. You know, they're not locals. They moved up here from Florida. But they're doing an ace job at a local business. So I tell everybody, you know, call, place your order, pick it up. When I got there to get mine, I had to wait like 10, 15 minutes because there were multiple orders there. People are ordering like crazy. That's what we want to see, Paul. Mm -hmm. We want to see success. We do, and, and now, and I'm going to challenge the locals to look at the move-ins like this. Okay, mm -hmm. there are many people that were born and raised here who had no choice. This is where God placed them. Right. But every single person that has moved here had other options they on chose places here. to go, yes. and they chose here yep. for a specific reason. That's a good thing. That's mm -hmm. not a mm -hmm. bad thing. Absolutely. And um, so. So, I, I mean, I don't have any issues with Well, Bell's here. Pharmacy at Tate is a perfect example. Right. That was the local All Red Jordan forever and ever and ever. Those people moved in here. They're doing a fantastic yeah. job. There are people who chose our communities from ball ground to turtle town. People are coming mm -hmm. in and finding something and falling in love with the community. This guy up here that spent gazillions of dollars in McKaysville, he's redone the whole town, but he's done a fantastic it job. It has been a fantastic job. It looks He's great. done a fantastic mm -hmm. job. And I said, those are mm -hmm. the things, if you stop progress, then you stop the success of all those small local businesses. We can't mm -hmm. do that. We can't well, do I'll that. Well, i tell you, Quinn's Nursery is a good little business up yes, there, Yes, they are fantastic. I like yeah, those people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that when they get out, they sell out and they're done and you don't have anything yeah. left, but, but we love that. Now, 2022. Yes. Give me a two minute what's going to happen. No clue. Um, I think uh, based on where we are right now, if Omicron does what they, what it looks like it's going to do. Fast and furious. Fast and furious. Hopefully not that many people dying. We should reach natural and herd immunity through that. I think the vaccine pressure should be backing off by the government. Uh, the division that they're causing. I mean, this this president may not be able to think clearly enough to realize it's time to back off of it. But I think 2022 is going to let us have a real good look at what the economy actually is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as we open up, I think people are going to be going back to sporting events. They're over it. They're mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see tired people. of that two year. Ugh. I think there's the potential to see a massive uh, um, backlash against those political individuals that have been in power. Mm -hmm. And if they've been silent and done nothing to stand up to protect our freedoms, I think they're going to be pushed out the door. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so so I'm curious to see how this year is. I think inflation is going to subside a little bit in the short run, but it's going to continue later in the year. Energy prices are probably going to continue to climb some. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, we're we're in uncharted territory to the point that everything is so expensive that we have no historical precedent. Mm -hmm. it's, we're going to have one heck of a hangover at some point in the future. I don't know if that's later this year or if that's next year, but, but uh, this year will probably a bit, be a little bit of a year of transition. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would be surprised if this momentum ends before the spring. Uh, the one wild card is, is the Federal Reserve says that they're going to accelerate the quantitative easing reduction and in raising interest rates. Mm -hmm. So we're going to find out probably midsummer how the economy holds up with mm -hmm. the little bit higher interest rates. Mm -hmm. Hopefully the economy can stand on its own mm -hmm. uh, um, and, and we get back to more normal, sustainable, diversified growth. We, mm -hmm. We've got to get to where the Federal Reserve is not the only thing propping up the entire economy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because there's no diversification in that right. and uh, and they're they're human they're fallible so uh, if 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 they make a misstep and they're the one that controls everything then we're all going to suffer the consequences well you know talking mm -hmm. about the shots mm -hmm. and, and everything we know people who've had strokes who had the shots we know people who I actually know someone who died who had the shot. We know it's, it's a life's choice, mm -hmm. but something we haven't talked about is our choice to bear arms. And that's a big right. thing in the news right now because I our governor is taking a little bit of heat because he is really trying to give you the right to bear arms. 
without a bunch of junk going on. So next month we're going to talk next, about that. I'll we're going to see how far it goes because because we do have the right to live our life according to our own happiness. Right. Pursue your own happiness, and that is so very very important. But do it without infringing on somebody else's. Right. Hey, I've got to I've got to put a plug out there for the, the the media in general, whether it's Fox or CNN. They're they're a joke. Yes. I, I'm sorry. I mean, yes. I know people still listen yes. to them, but they're a no. joke. Yeah. So I'm not a fan of Joe Rogan's big third eye on his forehead and I have all kinds of issues, but he interviewed two individuals in the month of December, Dr. Peter McCullough and Dr. Malone. And and those were some of the most intellectually stimulating and fascinating interviews that I have seen because he genuinely just wants to know the truth. It's mm -hmm. an inquisitive mind and I believe most Americans are like that. Absolutely. And yeah. uh, so I don't know if We're you guys are right. We're ready for the truth. Yeah. It's on Spotify. So it's worth that's watching. That's what I was going to ask you. Tell people how to find it. Yeah, Spotify. Find it. It's on Spotify. Joe Rogan. Look for Peter McCullough and okay. Dr. Malone interview. Okay. And uh, Mickey Holyfield, write that down. <laughs> if, if, hey, and they may be controversial. You know, one of them's like three hours. It took me four days. Oh, but, wow. But wow. Uh, I've got friends that are 100% for the vaccine and some that are against. So yeah. we've had the yeah. most enjoyable Crazy. conversations Crazy. over that. Well, it's time for us to get out of here. I'm going to a doctor's appointment in Forsyth County and Mr. Paul Kiker's going back and do what he does. He's going to manage your wealth. I hope to see you again soon. Only on ETC. Tune in again tonight at 6 o'clock. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, pick up the phone and call Paul Kiker at Kiker Wealth Management. I'll see you again soon. Bye, y'all. Bye. <sighs>